Good afternoon. I'm glad to hear to see everyone. And uh, today we hear a lot of uh, great features and uh, great talks about uh, testing. Uh, so it's no secret that Sonic community is a test-driven community, right? So with new features pulling in, and we have our test base growing every year. So for the past two years, we have been doubling our test cases, numbers of test cases, year by year. So I don't know who here has, has an idea of how many test cases we have in the Sonic manual repo right now. Thank you, yes, that's about 3,000 test cases we have right now. And uh, I suppose that everyone here is, has have some experience with Sonic. So who here has raised a PR in Sonic Manager repo? Yeah, lots of people, I guess. And who here has raised a PR in Sonic Build Image repo? Again, lots of people, okay, great. Um, so I guess you are not Infamiliar with uh, how long the test will take, right? So, in the in the old days, the Sonic Engine repo test would take about five hours, five crucial hours, right? So, uh, I talked about the other engineers, and they, they basically mentioned this basic thing, right? So, I read the PR and I forget about it, and I take a look to the next day. So, that's probably not an uncommon practice for lots of people here. Uh, for Sonic build image repo, though. It's even longer because we have to build the image with your change first, and then we roll into the test phase, right? So that makes the testing time even longer with eight hours. So it's just setting the stage of what, the, what kind of problem we're dealing with here. Uh, oops, what the heck is going on? Stabilize, please. Oh. Physical connectivities. Reconnect cable? Sure, thank you. It's something more on my laptop side. Actually, we faced this issue with one of the laptops earlier as well. So, uh, Judy, can I use your laptop, please? Yeah, I think we should try a different laptop. Sorry about uh, technical issues. So uh, today I would, I'm mainly going to talk about the difference between the existing test, uh, test infrastructure and uh, what we have envisioned going forward with the scale out test infrastructure, also known as testbed v2. T no, scale out is uh, the tip of the iceberg of testbed v2. Uh, we're going there. Um, and the architecture of testbed v2 and uh, mostly the, the scale out part of it uh, for today and the milestones that we're taking to, um, to make it happen. Uh, so this is a very familiar uh, infrastructure that we have today. And lots of people here are probably very familiar with this uh, infrastructure that the PTF in test infrastructure. We have uh, a PTF docker generating IO and we have uh, um, fabric a fan out fabric to, to connect the, the DUT and uh, uh, CUS neighbors and the PDF together and we run a battery of uh, uh, test cases and uh, we can run it as a virtual switch or physical test bed. So 
Um, as I already give a little bit of ground, what kind of problem we're dealing with, right? So um, test time is very long. Five hours for test repo PRs, and eight hours for image repo PRs. And that is not taking consideration of if there's a test case being flaky, and you have to retry. That will take even longer. And on the physical test bed, we also have similar problem that we have instability on the test bed. We sometimes, some, some test bed just needs to go to hospital for, 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 for brief visits. And we have to fix it up and, um, and run natty tests again. So with 3,000 test cases, our natty test is consistently exceeding 24 hours. So that makes that we cannot run natty test per day, right? So we constantly have to build more test bed to actually run subset of test cases, chop the test cases in half, and that one test bed run first half, another test bed run the second half. Yes, we can do that, but it's not efficient. So when we think about the problem, right, so uh, the current concept is that, okay, we have test bed, we book the test bed, we run the test suite, whatever it is, nightly test suite, or PR test suite, also known as KVM test suite. We always oriented in the relationship of one to one relationship between the test suite and the test bed. So a few smart engineers come by, come by and say, hey, why don't we take this apart and put it upside down, right? So instead of facing at a test bed oriented uh, view of the test execution, why don't we turn it around and uh, look at a test plan oriented test execution. So here is our results in, in September, right? So the, the test time, at the time when we start introduce this infrastructure into the Sonic management repo, test time increased a little bit because we're debugging all kinds of issues. And over time, the test time actually decreases and stabilizes about two hours per PR test at this moment. There's a number of things I'll get into detail later, but this is how we get to reduce the test time from five hours to two hours in the past month or so. Of, of course, um, there's some burning marks for the last month, right? So there's a couple of issues that are very interesting and that haunted us for a little while and that makes a lot of retries and uh, in the build image is very, 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 very painful for the last month, but we over that hurdle now. Um, the reliability also increased uh, the reason why we have incre increase of this uh, reliability, I'll, I'll get into later, as I said earlier. So the basic, what we did is that we, we take this thing apart and, and take the offset down, right? So instead of doing things like the, the right, uh, left column, we take this apart and we build a test plan of all the test cases that we need to execute for a test suite. So for now, it's KVM test suite, PR test suite, right? So we collect all, all the test cases together and build the database around it. And then there's a scheduler is responsible for, for handing out the test cases to individual test beds to run them. Right? So the test bed come in and uh, they register them as a worker or agent of this test plan. And they start to pick out the test cases one and at a time and report the test results back to the infrastructure. And then by the end of the, the execution, the scheduler will collect all the test results from all the workers' agents and build the test results. So you can see that if we add two agents to a test plan, the test time is roughly cut to half. And if we both add to three, and it's roughly cut to one third of the time, right? So, and then we also have the other problem that I already mentioned earlier. With from time to time, we have these flaky test cases that haunted us from time to time, right? So, this testbed v2, the scale of infrastructure actually can take consideration of this flakiness of the test cases. It can configure a certain retry count. So if you fail the test case, and sometimes it's just because, we, don't get me wrong, we definitely need to fix those flakiness. But for the time being, it's not something that introduced by your PR or my PR, then we should give it a retry, give it another chance. Instead of retry the whole suite, we just retry the, the test case on the spot. And then once that the second retry or third retry passes, then we just mark this test as passed. So with these two, 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 two methods, we actually can cut down the, the time into, uh, into about half. 
why we have still only cut to half, right? So because we still, every instance has to go through a setup and tear down process in this whole process. So instead of setting up one test bed and tear down one test bed, now it's setting up three and tear down three. So that adds a little bit of extra cost, but it's all good with good reasons. So this is the architecture of our infrastructure. Basically, we have a front end. We can actually uh, set up a test, and, and I, you can manually kick off a test with this front end. And we have a bunch of uh, uh, business modules or functional, functional modules in the, in the middle, top, top layer, uh, top middle, which displays the results, progress of the, the, the test, and it produces uh, the test plan and controls the uh, different uh, agents and hand out the, the test cases to the consumers of the each individual workers. Right, so and then the worker knows what's underneath the management of uh, uh, a management uh, framework that is actually responsible for managing and keep those uh, in virtual instances in a healthy order. So when a test plan needs to be executed, it can quickly hand out a few healthy nodes to the to the test case um, to to the test plan. So in the middle, if we actually see that one test worker is becoming not so healthy. So what we can do is that we can return that worker to the pool. And we can even borrow another test worker from the, from the pool to, to continue the execution. If the pool is exhausted, then we, we carry on with, with whatever agents we left. And at the bottom layer, we use uh, MySQL DB database to actually manage all the, all the uh, data uh, test plans and agent status. So this is a more detailed uh, view of how things uh, glue together, right? So uh, I'm not going to go to the gory detail of this one. And we have infrastructure creation and management. And uh, I covered lots of contents already. So we, uh, when the test plan was built, we hand out agents and uh, execute the test plan and record the test results. Uh, this is some, some, some uh, if you have tried to look at the, the progress tab of the, of the testbed v2, the scale out infrastructure, uh, yes, you can see uh, real time progress indication and uh, you can see the, the test results, the individual tests, and you can download log from each, each, each individual test. If it's failed, it's very easy to download a small set of isolated log to look at and to try to debug. And talking about the incident, <laughs> In late September and October, right, so early October, we have a couple uh, BGP-related uh, incidents, the issues that we discovered um, that actually caused a huge amount of uh, you know, uh, efforts to actually get them out of the way for now. Um, but testbed way to actually come in in an unexpected way to save us in, a <laughs> in, in, in the investigation. It's very interesting. So, because we have this test bed V2, we have a chance of coming in and create a specialized test plan. And because we find, identified a uh, very reliable repro method of how do we repro the issues that we encountered in, in sub, later September and early October, right? So <laughs> we can run this test with test bed V2 overnight with 200 or 400 iterations. And that gives us a information of is this workaround going to work fine or not, right? So, or, <laughs> so basically, we, we smoke out the four different tests uh, intended to work around in, and overnight, and they didn't work. And then we, we also smoked the last one that seems to be working very well, and it's only failed once per 200 iterations. So yeah, so it's, it's still a workaround. We're still working on the problem, but then this is what, what this test that we do can bring us with the capability, uh, the capability that it can bring us uh, in the future. So uh, right now we're trying to improve this, right? So infrastructure to, for, for everyone's benefit to get the PR test faster and, and get the PR close uh, merged earlier. Uh, so we are going to get it to open source by the time probably uh, around March of next year. Uh, right now the code is still in uh, very, uh, a little bit, <laughs> Azure, uh, very <laughs> tightly related to Azure uh, infrastructures. It's not a reason to, to, to prevent it from going open source, but we want to clean it up a little bit, to make it a little bit more modularized, and people can plug in different infrastructures. So 
and get the benefit of the of the infrastructure, right? So uh, right now, as I said, we already rolled out this infrastructure to Sonic Mansion repo, and its test was like two hours flat. And uh, as soon as I have a couple of PRs in the Sonic Mansion repo, I hated the PR testing, the Sonic build image repo. Of course, we have some other improvements right now, but we're rolling out this infrastructure to Sonic Mansion repo. So hopefully in the near future, we're going to cut down the Sonic Mansion repo PR test time from currently eight to 10 hours on a sunny day to four to five hours, right? So we did some improvement in the build part. I think that right now you probably already noticed that the build time is reduced by at least one hour. And then we're going to, to draw this testbed V2 and then it will get, going to further cut down the five hour test to two hours. So another three hours is out of the door, so out of the way. So we are at least going to cut down four hours for the PR test time. Uh, yeah, so this is just the beginning of the, you know, the, this, this journey. So we want to move this infrastructure more to the physical test bed, nightly test, right? So we, that we have lots of visions in, uh, in, for the future, right? We want to be able to use different uh, physical test bed to work together to run the same nightly test. I don't know if you guys have the same pain as ours, right? So we, most of the test bed is, is occupied by nightly tests. And the, the time left for, for dev, dev team to actually look into issues and run some tests is very limited per day, right? So if we could build more test beds and let them to run the, the natty tests together so they were pretty much end, roughly at the same time so you don't have to be, be a, use a human source to calculate how much time each test case takes, right? And then uh, divide them into two or three groups depending on how many test beds you have and, and, and work on the schedulers, it will automatically happen. So you have N workers, you will divide in N way naturally for you. So yeah, we want to, to roll out this infrastructure and, and, and give this benefit to the whole community. Um, yeah, that's uh, most that I want to share today. Any questions, comments? Thank you, Ling. I think it has been very insightful and a very useful presentation. Thank you for doing that.